Hello everyone, this is Mr. Informal giving you my take on the Panasonic GX9. It the Panasonic GX9 was announced announced last week. And it will succeed the Panasonic GX8. So nomenclature or the naming schemes the numbering schemes are in the GX series so basically it will be the continuation of the GX line but as you can tell from the title this is a rant because I have multiple issues with this Panasonic GX9 just so you know Disclaimer, I own a Micro Four Thirds camera. I have a Panasonic GX1. GX1, a camera that was from 2011, I think. But whichever, it doesn't matter. But the fact is, I was shopping for Micro Four Thirds and I was hoping for the GX9 to be the camera that I was looking for, whether it be uh, adding a 3.5 millimeter microphone the GX8 had a 2.5 millimeter obviously a fully tilt screen and a better image stabilization but uh, upgraded sensor and also upgraded video features because I was thinking of shooting new videos for my reviews and so and so and also I've been wanting to give my micro four thirds system and lenses a new camera body but the Panasonic GX9 was a disappointment or is a disappointment so let's compare the two via DP review so the MSRP right now on the GX8 is $1200 this is US dollars by the way and we got a thousand dollars on the GX9 sensor sensor is this still the same 20 megapixels IS 5 axis on the GX9 4 axis on the GX8 uh, ISO range same thing 10 uh, 100 to uh, 25,600 it's still contrast detect no joystick burst rate is this is the same six frames per second the LCD was a minor upgrade we're looking at 1.24 megapixel versus the 1.04 megapixel on the GX8 the viewfinder is actually a downgrade so the GX9 is 2.7 megapixel dot versus the GX8 2.36 dot OLED that's an OLED people Viewfinder is still the same. Built-in flash. Actually, the GX9 has a built-in flash. I was okay with that, but I mean, we're we're push, pushing pins here. The video is still the same. The Wi-Fi was upgraded, but the GX9 has Bluetooth. The GX8 doesn't. The battery life was decreased. So, the battery life on the GX9 can take 260 shots versus. 340 shots of the GX8 now my problem with this is that the GX9 is not an upgrade to the GX8 the GX9 is an upgrade to the G80 and G85 I really don't understand why Panasonic wanted to make this a GX series not only that the viewfinder is not tiltable cannot be tilt and uh, there are less controls on the top compared to the GX8 the worst of all is that the screen is only tilt but it's not a very angle it's not fully tiltable I, I don't understand what's going on here and you know what I'm sorry let me rephrase that the LC the viewfinder on the GX9 is tiltable can be tilt okay but goes back to my screen the screen is not a very angle not full tilt screen fully articulated screen so that was quite disappointing and i mean they're still using the micro usb why not 
USB-C will be much more convenient and yes I know this gun cheaper but I, I really don't know what to say about this this GX9 I think this GX9 is overpriced a thousand dollars I think it should be only seven hundred dollars it's still using the same technology that's back in what 2015 I, I don't even know when the GXA was announced I mean it could be 2060 but it doesn't matter the fact that it's still using the same sensor as the GX8 and also the GX8 had a microphone jack even though it's 2.5 millimeter but this GX9 does not have any input jack at all for microphone or even micro uh, headphone so there's a lot of dis disappointing features about this camera and I'm looking at the forums and also other reviews, video reviews or video announcement and they said oh it's it's a good camera. So and so oh look don't get me wrong this is a good camera but for a successor of the GX8 it's a terrible camera it's a terrible upgrade. And I don't understand why people are defending the thousand dollars. I, I believe that it should be cheaper than that. Heck. Panasonic should have just made it a G90 or G95 instead of a GX series. And I, I mean, I understand that there's not really a great technology or updated technology sensor in the micro four thirds. But when you do these things, such as what Panasonic, Panasonic is doing, is probably just milking everything they can on the sensor. I think that's just terrible for the consumers. Now, if you tell me if I'm gonna get this camera, I say no. But if you happen to find this camera for four hundred dollars, go buy it. Now, should you upgrade to this if you own a GX8? I said no. Now, what if you have a G80 or G85? I would still say no. What if you have a G uh, G80? right I was I still say no heck you know if you have a GA4 it would be say no if you have an EM10 I think this would probably compete with the EM10 from Olympus and I think the EM10 is a better better camera than this and if you have an EM5 Mark II I still think the EM5 is a better camera than this so I don't really know what this is for I guess this is for people who want to start uh, in, in interchangeable cameras or micro four third system I mean I don't know what to say and somehow or another people will find a way to defend this camera I can defend this camera if this was $800 $700 yeah I can see that but $1000 I, I mean I don't know what to say the fact that Panasonic has announced this camera for the GX series show that there is no major progress in Panasonic Micro Four Thirds brand. They are only focusing on the bigger systems such as the GH5 and GH5S. There is nothing more to say about that. And the fact that Panasonic has decided to milk the consumer as much as they can is a disappointment. And I truly hope that Panasonic learn from Dex and I truly hope they do not sell a lot of GX9. And so that basically concludes my rant about this camera. It's an absolutely disappointing camera to say the least. And if you like it, it's your money. But if you have to ask me, don't even buy it. And so this is Mr. Informal. I will see you in the next rant. Bye-bye.